Recipe for Success Network. Welcome back to my channel, Emma here, and today we're gonna to be talking all about PDUs and how to maintain your PMP certification. Walk with me while I go through my own recertification process to maintain my PMP, and we're gonna talk about what are PDUs, why they're important, requirements to maintain your certification for your PMP, and how you can get all of your PDU credits that you need in order to maintain your PMP certification. If you don't have a PMP, stay tuned anyway because this is really good information for you to know on how you can maintain your PMP if you choose to get one for free. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. So the first thing you might be wondering is, what are PDUs and what are you talking about when you talk about requirements in order to maintain a PMP certification? Now PMP stands for Project Management Professional. It's a project management certification that's offered by PMI, the Project Management Institute, which is a global organization that certifies project managers. When you take your exam to sit for the PMP and get certified, that certification is good for three years. In order to maintain your PMP, you have to meet something called continuing certification requirements. Now this is where PDUs come into play. The term PDU stands for professional development units, and they're essentially credit hours, if you will, that PMI requires you in order to re-up and recertify your PMP. That is, in essence, to maintain in good standing for your PMP. The goal, of course, with these continuing education requirements is just that your certification remains relevant and that you're up to date with what's going on in the project management community and sphere. As I've been going through this personally, one of the things that I've really appreciated and enjoyed is that a lot of the ability and opportunities for me to maintain my PMP and learn is really focused on Agile, which is really big right now in the community. And I've really enjoyed actually hearing from a lot of other project managers about how they've tackled different Agile issues and questions. I also just wanna make a quick note that PMI did have a reshuffling of their requirements for continuing education that changed. So everything I'm gonna be talking about in today's video applies to any certification that was completed after 12-1-2017. So why are PDUs important? Again, like I mentioned, you really wanna make sure if you've gone through all of the effort, all the money, all of the time to get your PMP in the first place, spending hundreds of dollars potentially, or even just the time, maybe your employer actually paid for your certification, but you still used your own personal time to study and sit for the course, you wanna keep that certification. You wanna be able to maintain it, make sure you're in good standing with PMI. I've definitely worked for employers that if someone lists a PMP on their resume, they'll go ahead and actually check that against the PMI database, so you don't wanna lie on your resume or let that certification lapse. In addition, as we know, PMI does say that most project managers with the PMP certification make roughly 25% more than non-PMP certified project managers. So, in order to bolster your chances for job success and earning what you deserve, I definitely suggest that you maintain your certification. In addition, like I said, it also gives you a good understanding of what's going on within the project management community, what's the newest and latest and greatest information. And last but not least, you also actually have an opportunity to network as part of re-upping your continuing education. So let's talk about the actual requirements, guys, in order to maintain the certification. So it's a three-year term that your certification is good for, the PMP, and after that, you need 60, six zero, professional development units over those three years in order to stay in good standing with PMI. Now, each one unit is roughly equal to an hour of effort. So what they're basically saying is over the course of three years, they're expecting you to maintain and put in 60 hours worth of education in order to maintain your certification. Also, I did wanna just point out, I'm talking specifically about PMP certifications, but other certifications do in fact require PDUs as well. Now, PMI does not dictate if you have to do a set number every year, for example, 20, 20, 20 over those three years. They don't tell you you have 
have to do that. You can wait until the month before your certification is up for renewal and get all 60 at the last minute, or you can do it bit by bit. You can do it in any way that works for you. The 60 PDUs is broken out into two requirements. The first is education and the second is giving back. So those are essentially the two buckets of areas that you're gonna need to fulfill in order to hit those 60 credits. For education, it's broken down even further and there are some specific requirements which I'm gonna dig into right now to make sure you guys understand how you can get all of your requirements for your PDUs. So for the education portion, you must get a minimum, a minimum, this is a minimum, of 35 PDUs. So they're expecting you to spend at least 35 hours over three years on continuous education in the project management space. If you look at the latest Project Management Institute triangle around what they expect project managers to have in terms of skill set, it's broken out into technical, strategic, and leadership. So they expect you to have eight in each of those different areas in terms of, again, education. So eight technical, eight strategic, and eight leadership. Now, if you're adding all those up, 888, that equals 24, not 35. You're probably saying to yourself, Emma, what do we do for those last 11? Great question. They can actually be split amongst all three, or you can do them in any one area that you like. So for example, you could choose to do those remaining 11 in technical, or you could choose to break those out across the three in any sort of distribution that you like. But the requirement here is that you must do a minimum of eight in each of the three areas, plus an additional 11 to hit 35 minimum PDUs in the area of education. You can, of course, do more, 35 is a minimum, but you cannot do any less. This is an important distinction here in terms of making sure that you stay in good standing with PMI and maintain your PMP certification. So you're probably wondering what counts as education. If you are unfamiliar with the process for recertifying your PMP, you actually can do that online through the web portal with PMI. So you log in under your account and you can document how you've done and achieved all of your PDUs. And you can do this on your own, or there are some websites that will actually report your PDUs on your behalf if you can link your account with PMI. I'll go through that in a little bit. But for education, things like attending courses or classes on project management count. On-demand webinars, including those online, also count. Things like you being mentored count as well. Lunch and learns, even reading, like reading books on project management or reading articles, all of that counts towards your education hours. So you would go ahead and actually document that in your account in PMI, that that's how you spent your hours, and you would align it with one of those three areas. PMI will actually review those and then let you know how many hours they've accepted. Now the second piece here for getting those PDUs, guys, is called giving back. So here, a little different from the education, this is a maximum, a maximum of 25 PDUs that you can get for giving back. So when you add the 25 maximum for giving back with the 35 minimum for education, that's how you get to 60. You could in fact choose to do all of it just in education. There's actually no minimum requirement with the giving back. So giving back is gonna include things like volunteering, creating knowledge, and working as a professional. So right off the bat, guys, you can actually get eight PDUs, so it's basically eight credit hours, if you will, just for continuing to work as a project manager. So these are an easy eight PDUs that you can get. So I definitely recommend that you go ahead and put that into your PMI if you've been working as a project manager. Now for working, it does cap out at eight maximum. So you can't do anything beyond that, unfortunately. Then there's of course volunteering. So you might be volunteering at a PMI meeting or a PMI networking event or within the community doing other things related to project management and then creating content. I thought this one was pretty interesting. It includes things like giving presentations, creating content. So maybe you wrote an article or a blog post, sharing knowledge. So this could be you actually mentoring a junior project manager. So definitely I think giving back is one of those fun things where you have an opportunity to get up to 25 PDUs towards your 60 that you need in order to make, be in good standing. So now let's talk about some of the options for how you can get those education hours. There are paid options through PMI to maintain all of your PDUs. I would say if you have the money and you don't care, this might be a really easy way to get all of your PDUs, 
but I wanna emphasize that that's not required. I've seen a few comments from different individuals that suggest that they think that you have to continuously pay in order to recertify your PMP, but that's not true. And I will say I have not paid anything for my PDUs and I don't intend to. And I wanna share with you guys how you can also get all of your PDUs for free. So in terms of non-paid opportunities, there is a website called projectmanagement.com and PMI even links out to them. And basically they have webinars. You can log in using your PMI logins to this website. And when you do that, they have on-demand webinars. Now, what you'll notice first and foremost is that some of the webinars are tagged as premium. So you have to have a PMI membership, premium membership in order to see those. I don't because it costs I think $150, but there are plenty of other on-demand webinars that are actually free, regardless of whether or not you have that membership and anyone can take advantage of those. The other perk and benefit to using this website is as you watch all of the video content, which is varied and definitely um, covers all those different areas, technical, strategic, and leadership, they'll actually auto update and report your PDUs directly to PMI. So you don't have to go in and manually do that yourself like you would for things like creating content or reading or volunteering. Once you're on this website, you can actually filter on the left-hand side here. You can filter if there's a specific area where you're missing a lot of PDUs. So maybe you already got a lot of leadership or strategic PDUs through reading or through local sources, but you're missing a lot of technical, you can actually filter on webinars that qualify as technical PDUs and choose just to watch those so you know exactly what you're gonna be getting. I also really like this website because you can also see different languages. So they do have content available in different languages for those of you who might prefer a non-English webinar. Now, one thing I will note and caveat is this doesn't update daily or immediately after you finish your PDUs. It does say that it takes up to 48 hours, potentially a little longer in order to update. So don't worry if you are concerned about not being able to see your PDUs. They should show up after a few days. So that's everything I have for you guys today. I hope you found this really informative. As I've been going through my continuing education process to get these PDUs and maintain my PMP certification, I know that it can be a bit challenging and daunting, certainly not knowing where to start. And when I was first going through this information, trying to understand the difference between education and volunteering, what the requirements were, minimums versus maximums, and how to actually get it done was definitely confusing to me. So I hope this video helped clarify for you guys how you can get your PDUs and maintain your PMP certifications. I also hope for those of you who are considering getting a PMP, this helped clarify for you that you do not need to spend more money to maintain that PMP certification once you have it. If you have any other thoughts or questions for me, please leave them down below in the comments section. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.